Warning, this video contains spoilers of the anime in question. If you do not want to see said spoilers, I suggest go watch the anime right now and then come on back. Everyone, I have something very important to tell you. There is something out there. Something small, something innocent looking, but truly is evil. They'll whisper sweet nothings in your ear, promise you greatness, but then they'll just turn around and stab you in the back. Some of you may know who I'm talking about. Or do you? Hey there everybody, welcome to another anime review. Now today's anime is one that I myself wouldn't have watched if I had just come across it on a website or anything. But a good friend of mine pleaded with me to watch it, stating that it was a completely normal magical girl anime. So, taking a leap of faith, I looked it up. And about a week later, I had watched all the episodes as well as the follow-up movie. And, uh, I was completely blown away by the amazing story. This anime is just gonna suck you in with vibrant colors, pretty girls, nice things to look at, and an overall happy feeling. Just to break you down and crush you with what it actually is, Pelua Magi Madoko Magica just takes your hopes and dreams of a magical girl anime and puts a dark and twisted twist on it all. Now all of you who have seen the anime are probably thinking right now, Ah, Kyubei, we hate him! He's the devil in disguise! Well here I am today and I'm gonna tell you guys that Kyubei may not be the worst person in this show. And for all of you who haven't watched this anime yet, I cannot emphasize enough Spoiler alert. There's a link down in the description that will take you to a website where you can watch the anime free and, of course, the follow-up movie. Alright, so let's get the lineup ready. We have Kyubei, the cute little cat bunny fluffy thing. I don't even know what to describe him as. He's just Kyubei. I mean, that's it. Kyubei's the one who creates the magical girls. He approaches a girl, says that he can grant them any wish that they desire. In return, they have to fight the invisible evils of the world, uh, the witches, and their wish will come true. Now, he is such a devious creature to be preying on young girls like this because, as we all know, young girls, eh, not trying to point any fingers or slander anyone's name or anything like that, but they would be easy to manipulate into making a wish on something that can backfire in the end. Which is what happens once the magical girls fall deep enough into the spare. They then become a witch, which will then be hunted down by other magical girls. And then Kyubei feeds off the energy of the grief seeds, which come off of dead witches. So basically, he's a self-sustaining energy creator. As long as there are young girls in the world to become magical girls, Kyubei will have an infinite amount of energy for whatever he feels like he needs. Now, although that is terrible, I just have one question to ask you. Can we really blame him? I mean, can we really blame a creature that has no ability to process human emotion to feel anything when he's just using something to get a resource an energy source do we cry over every cow that we kill or pig that we turn into bacon and yeah i'm talking to all the americans out there on that one because for some reason america's obsessed with bacon yes i understand that what cuba is doing is pretty much wrong but compared to the other person i have in mind he is an angel the person that i'm talking about is homura yeah, weren't expecting that now, were you? If you actually sit back and just watch what Homura does, you can see that she is no better, nay, I say worse, than Kyubei. You want points? <laughs> yeah, I got points for ya. First off, Homura's special ability as a magical girl is the ability to travel through time and to distort time when she needs to. Now, she's gone through this 
loop of the same month while trying to save Madoka for a lot of times. And wouldn't you think out of any of those times, she would actually try to help Sayaka as well? As we know, Sayaka eventually becomes a witch and has to be destroyed. But instead of trying to help her, Homura just tells Madoka to just completely forget about her. Even though in a past iteration of the same month, Homura, Madoka, and Sayaka were all friends. And while on that same note, since we do know that Homura has gone through the same month loop multiple times, I actually did some research on that. I was thinking, how many times has she gone through the same loop? And if my research holds true, she's gone through the loop many a times, maybe even hundreds. Because we have to take this into account. When she's fighting well... Wells Pergnot at the end of the anime, she is able to calculate where the witch is going to go next even after she's hit it with an explosive. So she's fought Wells Pergnot enough times to know exactly how it's going to react to a certain attack. Now, how many times would it take for her to get down that kind of information? Who knows? But, in the episode where it actually shows her going through the loop, giving Homura's backstory, I counted at least eight times. And, during some of those times, there were no other magical girls around when Madoka and Homura fought Wells Pergnot. What does this suggest? That Homura had killed them. She knew that they would eventually become witches, so she got rid of them before they could. Now that's dark. She kills her friends just because they'll f turn out evil in the end. I mean, that's just wrong. What's the point I'm trying to make here? Homura is actually insane. And the bad kind of insane. Where's my proof? Did I ever tell you the definition of insanity? The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting things to change. And that is exactly what she's doing. She's replaying the same month over and over and over again, trying to save Madoka, when the universe basically is telling, Um, look, she has a destiny that she has to fulfill. Just let her do it. And every time Homura resets the month, it gets darker and darker and more twisted and a little bit more scary, actually. And as she's doing this, Madoka is changing as well. As we saw in the first iteration of the month, Madoka was a very confident and powerful person. But as they went on, Madoka became more recluse, more recessive, and more afraid and Homura was becoming more confident. So, essentially, they were switching places. Madoka was becoming a person that would need Homura's help, which is what Homura wished for. She wished that she could protect Madoka. So Madoka was becoming a person that needed protection. Now, I know what a majority of you guys are thinking right now. Oh, but they're just friends, and Homura's just being a real good friend, and they, she just wants to save her best friend, and all this stuff, her protect. Well, it isn't until you watch the follow-up movie that it all comes into fruition. And once again, spoiler alert. Now, at the end of the anime, there are no longer any witches. Due to Madoka's witch, where she basically became the god of the world, and saves every single magical girl before they come a witch. So now the magical girls fight wraiths. But at the beginning of the movie, there are no wraiths to be found. And we later learn that the world that the magical girls inhabit is actually a labyrinth created by Homura as she's slowly turning into a witch. Once she's able to break free of her own labyrinth, Madoka comes pretty much down from heaven to uh, save her from becoming a witch. And what does Homura do? She rejects the salvation, kills Madoka, and basically takes her power. And then once again, the universe is recreated with Homura having 
almighty power like Madoka did and basically becoming the opposite of what she was. Homura becomes the devil of this new world, repressing Madoka's memories and her powers, even though she still has them. So essentially, what did Homura do? She took the only salvation that magical girls have, and she tore it down and destroyed it just for her own selfish needs. And at the very end of the movie, we see that Madoka has her memories and has her power, but they're just being repressed by Homura. So, is there going to be a fourth movie where it's going to be a battle between Madoka and Homura? Pretty much the god and the devil of the world? Who knows, but I'm wishing for it. So now that I've said all that, who's really the bad guy in this show? Is it Kyube, or is it Homura, or is it a little bit of both? But hey, those are just my thoughts. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this anime review. I know it's been a while since I made one, but I felt that this anime really deserved its own review. So anyway, now that you're done watching this, why not watch some of my other videos? Maybe some reviews, or maybe some of my Let's Plays. Or, you know, you can just go outside, you know, enjoy the sunshine. If there's sunshine where you're at, who knows? But anyway, I'll see you next time.